Hey guys, this is Eric Weingarten with Weingarten Racing. Today's video is about these Trek Flow 280cc big block Chevy heads. These are oval ports. Now I'm gonna show you the flow numbers real quick. And this was done on my Signs Digital 680 bench. I have a 4310 bore that I float it with and I use a straight bore. So if you, for instance, if you've got a 454 block, some of them come notched where they've got a notch on the intake side and that usually helps flow. Some of you have done it yourself and just put a little notch at the top. And again, that helps flow. My bore is straight, I don't do that. So your numbers may actually flow better than that. You might say, well, why don't you ever test that? Because then I'd have to alter my bore plate and these are not cheap. But let me show you the flow numbers. They're good. This is amazing. So Trip Flow is known for having great numbers at 400 valve lift anyway, no matter what make of head they're on, Ford, Chevy, whatever. You look 271 at four on a 4310 bore on the long runner, that's great, and 263 on the short runner. Don't forget now, you might say, why, why do you say long and short? Big block Chevys have a long runner and they have a short runner. They are different. So the long runner enters towards the center, the short runner is entering towards the wall. That's why it doesn't flow as well. So back to the flow numbers. So great 400 number, great. 600, 500, it's eh. But the peak numbers are really good for this side. Remember, this is only 280 cc's. This is phenomenal. At 900, it went 340 on the long and 344 on the short. And I know some of you are already saying, no one's running a 900 lift with these. Oh, but I am. Because I'm going to put this on my dyno mule and we're going to be close to 900 lift anyway. But it's first going on, this is big news, the 496 dyno mule. So the one that we tested all the other heads with, I talked to Dominic and said, man, let's... Uh, Let's dyno this. Let's uh, put these on this 496 and see how they compare to the AFR 265s, Pro Mac 290s, the Pro Max 317s, the Race Right 270s, the AFR 265. Let's see how they compare with all the other oval ports. Yeah, I threw one rectangle port in there when I was just saying it. But anyway, so we are going to do that. The exhaust flow is really good too. 198 at 4, 275 peak, and this is without an exhaust pipe. But don't flow with the exhaust pipe because it kind of cheats up your numbers. Anyway, there's your flow number, so if that's all you wanted to see, congratulations, you're done with your video. Now let's actually get to the technical part of the video and what the head is. These are oval ports, as you could tell, and these are true oval ports. So for instance, if you got like an AFR or the Pro Max, they're more of a roval. These are closer to what you'd find on a 781 um, stock casting. See, these are oval, just kind of like the Brodix Race Right 270s. Now what separates these from the Brodix Race Right 270s is a couple of things. One, this valve angle is rolled over. So a stock valve angle is 26 degrees for a big block Chevy. Most aftermarket companies have switched to 24 degrees. Brodix's race right 270 is still 26 degrees. These are 24 degrees and typically they flow better. So that's one thing that's different. The other thing that's big about this is they have raised the exhaust port. So the Brodix race rights, their exhaust ports in stock location. These tri trick flows are raised up about 300,000. But before you get worried about your headers not clearing, it's not a direct move up. So you're not like, wow, I'm going to be hitting my steering arm or something else if I go up 300,000. Because remember, the engine's sitting at a V. So at 300,000, it might actually only be 200,000 because it's sitting at an angle because you're raising it at this way, not just that way. Anyway, there's that. But let me show you some more of the stuff of the head. They come with a 200, or sorry, 113 cc CNC chamber, which by the way, good job. Blends into the top cut like butter. Look at that. I know it sounds like I'm selling them. By the way, I do sell these heads. I sell also AFR heads, Brodix heads, and just about any head you could buy. But I'm saying this because that's good work. There's no ledge I and mean, beauty, beautiful. This is what's behind it which I'm not doing my best. Let me go ahead and turn on my light here so you can kind of see. Hopefully I don't knock the thing over. There we go. Yeah. It comes with CNC bulb in on the intake and the exhaust. And also, of course, as you could tell here, you have your CNC gasket match at the opening. So CNC bulb in. And valve sizes, this is a 219 intake valve and a 188 exhaust valve. I know some of you are screaming right now, I wish it was a 225 intake valve, 2.25. They didn't do that because Trick Flow, the guy has said this to me before, they try to make a head that's one size fits many, not one size fits all. 
So in this case, the 219 is going to work for a lot of you guys anyway. Because clearly, for the amount of airflow that it's moving, for the size of this valve, it's good. The benefit with the 219 is some people still run 396s. This will fit on it. So it's much harder with a 225 intake valve, 219, you're going to fit. So that's a benefit. As far as like, would it flow more if you added a 225? Maybe. This head has future plans. And one of the things we're gonna do on it, for those that are new to the channel, unaware of it, last year we tested a bunch, like six different heads on a 496 dyno mule. And it was a hydraulic roller, 237, 240 something, and about 630 lift. It's pretty much what most of you would run if you were doing a hydraulic roller 496. It had about 10.3 compression ratio, although that depended on the chambers. These are probably bringing up to like 10.9. And we tried a bunch of different manifolds too, whether it be uh, dual planes, single planes, and 4150 carburetors as well. And we just dyno tested a bunch of heads, like I said, AFR 265, the Promax 317s, the AFR Enforcer heads, the AFR 265 heds, Brodex Race Right 270 ovals, the Brodex Race Right 294s, Pro Max 290s as well. I might have repeated some of those. But anyway, it tested a bunch of heads, but also each head got tested with multiple intake manifolds too to make sure it wasn't just the manifold that was holding back the head. Um, we tested many. And that was all put in the book, and you could purchase that on my website. I'll put a description down in the link. And it's, it's all in the form of a book in case you want it. Or you can go back and watch the old videos. This was pretty much the only oval port head that was not tested besides the 290 AFR and 300. And the reason why we didn't is because, one, we don't have them. The 290 AFR is essentially the same as the Promax 290. I haven't tested the 300, but maybe someday. This is a much closer, what we, you would think that would be run with a 496 anyway. So, and these heads are actually really, really reasonable, too. When, you, when I compare them out to the Promax stuff, these are almost the same cost. And guess what? American. Not only American, the valves that come in these... So this is American casting. The valves aren't. The valves are from Argentina, and they're some of the best valves you can get, which is Ferreja. So those valves are phenomenal. Great stuff there. They just come with good pieces, made in America castings, and they're about the same price as like the Promax. And I sell Promax too, so this is a good value. But the real question for most of you is, well, will it make more power? Hopefully we'll find that on the 496. Beyond that, I also have a 540 dyno mule. Now, it's far more radical. This thing is, it's it's made to eat up some stuff. So, on, with this chamber, we're probably going to be closer to 12, 3 to 1 um, on that. And that one has an 870, or an 874 lift whenever I have a 1.8 rocker on it, and 820 something on exhaust. And it's got a 112 lobe separation, and it, it's, it's more of a, definitely more of a aggressive engine. We're going to test this on it. And you're like, but this is totally where not does not belong. And I agree. The reason why we're testing it is, one, we're putting on the 496 because that's definitely where it does belong. That's that's going to be a nice street performance deal. But the 540 is going to be like, how far can we actually push this head? Like, when does it become a restriction? Like, how much is it going to lose on the 540? Then I'm going to port these. Now, the biggest you can go on this, looking at the seat that's here, just kind of show you. They do a great job on the valve job. But the problem is like that seat's only like 2280. So the biggest valve you can put in is a 2250. Um, so I'm probably gonna do that and some pull work to see what we can't squeeze out of these. Cause these, the casting itself looks really nice. The only thing, and this is me being picky, let me get my light going again, that I don't like about this. And as a porter, I wish it had it. Um, because as you know, from porting, it's really easy to remove material, but it's not easy to add material. And if you're looking at this right now, you can probably see it doesn't have a vein. So usually when the air hits this guide here, we like to have like, it looks like a teardrop and we have a vein that's about right here. So and on this one, this is a short one. Yeah, we'd have a vein facing this direction. The long one, we'd have it facing this direction. But there is no vein material. This looks more akin to what Dart used to do. They never ran veins forever. Brodix, I think, was the first casting I saw that had the veins cast into them and an as cast head. I prefer that. It probably would pick up some flow too, but I can't add that without using epoxy, and I'm just not a fan of trying to use epoxy on stuff, especially for customers and things. For an R&D project on the mule, maybe. But anyway, look for these heads to be used on the 496, 
and they're gonna be good. This head, like I said, is amazing. And if you got any questions about it or feel like I didn't answer it completely, let me know. Trick Flow has been awesome to work with and I'm a dealer for them as well. I'm a dealer for just about every head. So if it feels like I'm selling, I sell every head. But I am very, very, very impressed. And I'm looking to see how much power this, this deal makes on the 496 and also the 540. But this one could probably be the leader. So the numbers are looking good. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. You guys, remember, I do not port cast iron heads. I am no Superman. You guys take care.